It is our weekly check-in with the Oakville and Milton Humane Society. Joining us once again, registered veterinary technician, Maddie Genoda. And Maddie, this is going to be our version of TikTok for the kids, right? It sure will be. It's the it's the TikTok I know most about, that's for yeah. sure. Don't ask me about the other one. You are the specialist here for this. Yeah, so let's talk about ticks. Um, we hear ticks thrown about all the time when it comes to humans or when it comes to pets. Uh, let's start with the basics. What are ticks? So ticks are small little insects that feed on the blood of people and animals. So they start out quite, quite tiny um, when they're when they're just born in what we call their nymph stage. So kind of, you know, toddler, not full, not full grown. Um, they're, you know, you can, it's really hard to find them on animals because they are as small as a pinpoint sometimes, you know, tip of mm. a needle head, they get really quite tiny. By the time they're, they're big enough that they're, you know, exploring and looking for hosts to attach onto, they're still quite small, no bigger than a few millimeters across. However, if they do attach to you or your pet and they start having their blood meal, they can expand to you know, 10 times their, their size. Um, they get quite, they get quite big depending on how big the tick is to start off with. Um, and how long it's been attached for, the more engorged, call it engorged, once they've had their, their blood meal, the more um, engorged they are, the longer that they've been attached. And unfortunately, they can transmit uh, diseases both to humans and to pets. Yeah, I mean, so we, we kind of know, thanks to Avril Lavigne, that, you know, in humans, ticks lead to Lyme disease. As far as pets, though, uh, what problems can they cause? So the exact same thing is the, mm. the, our big worry for ticks um, in this area of Ontario um, and really Southern Ontario in general is Lyme disease. And that's transmitted through deer ticks, uh, also called black-legged ticks sometimes. Um, and so they, once they attach to you, if they've been attached for a long enough time, they can transmit the Lyme disease uh, to you or to your dogs. So, and I mean, last week I was up at a cottage and everyone, I brought my little dog with me and everyone was warning me, oh, ticks, 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 ticks. So how can you prevent, you know, your very curious and outdoor loving uh, animal, probably dog, uh, from coming into contact with them? How do you prevent that? And then I guess check for them as well? Yeah, so we're unfortunately at the point in southern Ontario where you really can't avoid coming in contact with them. It used to be certain areas were, you know, your hotspot areas, starting from the Kingston, Gananoque, Thousand Islands area. They came up the, the east coast of the states. Um, they both migrate themselves and they come in on birds a lot of the time. They travel on birds. And as we've been having these much more mild winters over the last few years, they've had more time of the year to travel. Ticks go dormant. It's not quite a hibernation, but they go dormant below zero degrees. Um, or if there's a snow cover, they can't move around. They can't, you know, hunt for their next meal, that sort of thing. But because of these mild winters that we've been having, they've had so much more active time per year. So they've just been been spreading and spreading and spreading over the over the last few years to the point where there's really not an area in southern Ontario along the border here where you won't run into some ticks. Um, and with that has unfortunately come as we get a higher population of ticks, we get a higher instance of Lyme disease in those ticks. Um, so there really is no avoiding it for your animals at this point, unfortunately. Um, but there are a number of preventions that you can get from your veterinarian that either prevent the tick from attaching to your dog in the first place, or if they do attach, it actually kills the tick before they have a chance to transmit any disease. Um, they generally say they have to be attached for 24 hours before they can transmit Lyme disease. Some studies will tell you it's a little bit less, um, but it's still, you know, you're looking at an 18 hour plus attachment. Whereas if you get the ingestible products from, from your veterinarian, you know, usually a once a month or once every three month uh, treat that you give your dog for flea and tick prevention, it will actually kill the tick within a few hours of attachment. So there's no um, chance of them transmitting disease to, to your dog or actually cat they have preventions for. Now, if you have cats that go outside as well, so they're not bringing them back into your house. Um, although reminder, cats uh, by law in Oakville cannot leave your property. <laughs> should, <laughs> throw, should throw that in there. Um, but yeah, so at this point, really can't do anything to prevent ticks access to your animals. So the best thing you can do is prevent them from being able to transmit disease. We do also recommend um, in general, if you go to an area where Lyme disease is quite rampant, so um, Kingston, that sort of thing, there is also a vaccine for Lyme disease um, mm. for dogs. 
it's not something that's a core vaccine in all areas of Ontario yet, but areas where, you know, greater than 50% of that tick population is positive for Lyme disease, they, they would recommend it as a vaccine there. So if, you know, you have a cottage in the Kingston area, spend lots of time there, definitely something worth talking to your vet about is uh, looking into that vaccine as well as uh, making sure that they are on flea and tick prevention. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. So talk to your vet, uh, figure it on out. But Maddie, thank you so much for the information today. Always appreciate it. And we'll chat with you again soon. Sounds good.